How's it going guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl Wi-Fi Battle. Today is the second time using this sand team, so hopefully it goes well. Here are the teams. Let me know who you think is going to win based on what you see on the screen right now. If you want to battle me, join the Discord server in the description, and please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. With that being said, let's find ourselves a game. And the battle begins, so Mike is going to lead off with Clifford the Big Red Dog, the Arcanine, as we obviously led off with Tyranitar. So Tyranitar works out not very well here because obviously they've got Intimidate and they've also likely got Close Combat, so we don't want to have to face that. Uh, close Combat will hurt quite a bit. Um, I say we go into Hippo... Hippo... Hippodin. Hippodin. Um, then again, they could just go for a uh, Will-O-Wisp as well. Maybe Mew is the best option. I think Mew is the best option. So we'll go Mew. We'll go Mew. I see their team has a ground type in Donphan. So I was kind of expecting the Donphan lead as well. Uh, more so expecting the Ambipom lead. So they go for a close combat straight away. Mew's going to be able to sponge that out like it's nothing. They get a defense drop, which makes it seem like they're going to switch out the next turn. Um, they probably do switch out. I would say they go into Slow King. So... With that in mind, let's go for a Thunderbolt, expecting the Slow King. Thunderbolt will still do some decent damage to the Arcanine if they do stay in and go for a Flare Blitz. Really don't think they will, though. In fact, is there a better play to make here? If they go Slow King, we could go um, Hippowdon, go straight for an Earthquake, and that'll do a lot of damage. I, I, I say we go Hippo. I think we go Hippo here. So we'll switch out into Hippo. Um, leave them into a false sense of security. If they go into Sloking here, they'll think they've made the right play. I think they do go Sloking, though. I think they definitely do go Sloking. Tantor. That's a Donphan. Okay, Donphan works. So Donphan's going to get smacked right in the face with an Earthquake right now. Um, something's going to take it. I don't think Salamance is the switch because Ice Fang is quite common on Hippowdons. Um, so they go into Ballyhoo, which is the Sloking. Let's see how much a Choice Banded Sand Force Boosted Earthquake does. Wow. That is some insane damage right there. Absolutely insane damage. Is that physically defensive? Ima imagine if that's physically defensive. The thoughts going through my opponent's brain right now must be rapid. So, with that damage in mind, we can just go straight for another Earthquake. They probably switch into Salamance. But at the same time, they don't necessarily know a Choice Banded. Are they going to withdraw, though? Are they going to go Salamance? Toothless. Yes, the Salamance, isn't it? Yeah. So they're going to go into Salamance, looking absolutely perfect. Uh, Earthquake's not going to hit, of course, um, which is a shame, but what can you do? Well, while we've still got Hippo at full HP, I'm going to go back into Tyranitar. Even if they set up a Dragon Dance, we can definitely take an Earthquake. Um, and we have Ice Beam, so we can just go straight for the Ice Beam to take it out. So we're going to Titar real quick. Uh, they go straight for an Earthquake, expecting to switch. We should tank that. Yeah, we do tank that. Nicely done, nicely done. So with that in mind... They probably go into Scizor right now. Um, I don't think they stay in and attack again. However, I am tempted to, to play it safe and go for a Stone Edge. Just to get some damage off on the Scizor. At least we know what kind of mindset our opponent's got. Because if we go for a Stealth Rock and they go for an Earthquake, we lost Titar. I uh, don't necessarily want to lose Titar right here, to be honest with you. Uh, then, then again, then again... Stone Edge might not do a lot of damage to the... Um, I think we go Stealth Rock. They go Scizor here. They definitely go Scizor. So they are going to withdraw the Salamance, of course. I was hoping they would Dragon Dance and get confident. They go into Tantor, which is the Donphan. Okay, Donphan actually works well. Um, we go for Stealth Rocks, of course. That's going to do nothing to the Donphan. However, they're probably going to take the time to Rapid Spin here. So I'm going to go for an Ice Beam on the Rapid Spin, and then we'll switch out. There we go. Go for the Ice Beam on the Rapid Spin, potentially. Rapid Spin, potentially. We froze the Donphan! Oh my lord, we froze it! No rapid spin for you, I'm afraid. Oh dear, that is just unfortunate. That's what happens when you wish your opponent good luck, have fun. We both did it, but it was in my favor. <laughs> Let's go for another Ice Beam. I see, I see absolutely no reason not to. They're probably thinking, why has he got Ice Beam on his uh, Tyranitar? Well, it's mainly for stuff like Salamance Dragonite, um, from stopping them from setting up. Uh, Gliscor is a big one. Donphan gets two shot by it, which is always nice. Um, there's another one as well, and I can't remember what it is. They're going to withdraw, though. They're probably going to go Slow King. Or they go Clamps. Yeah, Scizor makes even more sense, to be honest with you. So we go for a uh, Ice Beam on the Scizor. It gets hurt by Stealth Rocks. Let's see if we can get a second Freeze. Let's see if we can get a second Freeze. Watch this. Watch this Freeze. 
Critical hit. No freeze. Okay, Sandstorm subsides, which is absolutely fine. They're going to go for a U-turn here, and we just have to go into Rotom. That's all we can really do. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. We're going to our Rotom. Like so. There we go. Mittens comes in. Looking all small. They go for a Defog. Interesting. So Defog's a good one here. Um, now we have to decide whether to go for a Volt Switch or an Overheat. I think they anticipate the Overheat and they go for a... Hmm. A Sloking Switch. I think it's a risky play, but I think they're going to make it because the Donphan's frozen and it's got them a bit flustered. So let's go for a Volt Switch real quick on the... Um, on the Slow King. Come on, Slow King. Or Salamance, whichever. Tantor. That's the Don Fan. They went straight for Don Fan. Trying to kill off one of those freeze turns. That is really a shame because... Well, you know, it just is... It's, it's, it's just a shame. Maybe I should have gone for a trick there. Um, we're going to have to hard switch out now. Um, probably go back into T-Tar or something like that. Just trying to think what the best play here is. Let's go Mew. I think Mew's the best play. There we go. Gonna withdraw our Rotom Heat real quick and go into Mew. Mew can definitely take a Earthquake from this thing if it wakes up. Falls out even. They go for a knockoff. That's not very good. That is not good. Okay, so Life Orb is gone. But it's fine. We can still take this thing out with an Ice, ice Beam. Uh, they're either gonna attempt the Ice Shard or they're gonna go into Scizor now. Personally, I think they go Scizor or Apom. Um, I'm going to go for an Ice Beam anyway. No. We go for Psychic? Psychic. No, we go for Ice Beam, right? They try an Ice Shard, or surely. Or do we go Fire Blast expecting the Scizor? I'm overthinking it. Let's just play it safe. Let's go for an Ice Beam. There we go. They stayed in. Ice Beam's going to come through, take out the Donphan. That's perfect. So Donphan goes down. Now Rotom has free reign to Volt Switch around. That's great. Great news for us. And we're still alive because Life Orb's not gone. Here comes Abu. Abu is the APOM, of course. Um, this thing goes straight for a fake out. We're just going to go ahead and switch out. It's trying to target the sound stream up. Why not? Fake out would definitely take us out. U-turn would take us out, to be fair. So they might go for U-turn. But we are physically defensive Tyranitar, so we should easily be able to take a U-turn. It's non-stabbed, and APOM doesn't have the best attack in the world. It's still got a decent attack. There's the U-turn. See, look. Decent damage. Decent damage, I'd say. So, they switch into Scizor now. 100% going Scizor. Um, if they do, it's fine. You can handle that. They're going to go into Toothless, the uh, Salamance. Now, we haven't seen the um, Intimidate on the Salamance, so we know it's Moxie. They're probably just going to go straight for an attack. They might be Scarfed for all I know. They could be Scarfed, to be fair. Um, I just kind of want to go Rotom. So I'm going to go ahead and go Rotom. I'm fully expecting an Earthquake. Outrage would also KO me, but I don't think they go Outrage. Surely they wouldn't go Outrage. Because then they'd be locked in. Dragon Claw, that will work just fine. So, with that in mind, they're going to get hurt by the Sandstorm. They've got no Life Orb. We're going to get hurt by the Sandstorm. We've got no Life Orb. We're Choice Scarf. They're probably Choice Scarf. So, with that in mind, we go in Polion. We don't want to have to let our um, Rotom go down for no reason when we could use it later. You know? So, there's Empoleon. Empoleon comes in. We're definitely going to be able to take a Dragon Claw. I know you're Choice Scarfed. There's no way you're not Choice Scarfed. Look at that damage. Pitiful. Pitiful damage. So now, knowing that they are going to have to switch out, they're going to go into Slow King. And by going into Slow King, they're setting themselves up to be Grass Knotted. So let's go for a Grass Knot. They are definitely Choice Scarfed. They're definitely switching out right now. And if they're not Choice Scarfed, we can handle it better. Yep, there's the withdrawal. They are 100 billion percent choice scarfed. They're going to go into Ballyhoo, which is the slow king. Let's see how much damage this grass knot's going to do. Please be a two hit KO. That'd be perfect. It is a two hit KO. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. So we're going to get our leftovers in first, which tells me we are speed, of course. Unless they don't have leftovers. Do they have leftovers? They do. They do have leftovers. So leftovers is going to kick in. Now, grass knot should definitely KO from here. Um. They probably don't switch out. We go for Grass Knot again. Yep, they're just going to stay in and take it. I was going to say, they don't really have much of a switch into Empoleon. Empoleon works really well, so Slow King goes down. Now, all we've got to worry about is the Sand. Because looking at the rest of their team, 
Sand Slash does really well. Like, obviously they've got the Arcanine, which isn't going to work out well for us. So, they're going to go Clifford, the big red dog. This thing's going to get its Intimidate off, which is just fine. Um, we go ahead and sack Mew now. Yeah, we go ahead and sack Mew now to a close combat. Mew might actually take a close combat, to be fair. Uh, if it does take a close combat, that's perfect. But it won't take it enough. It'll, you know, sand, Sandstorm and stuff like that will definitely finish it off. So, um, no, going to take us out with a close combat. That's fine. Um, the fact that it's got close combat on it is just been set up, really. It's just been completely set up. So, Mew goes down. Clifford the Big Red Dog is going to get hurt by the Sandstorm a little bit. We're going to go into our Sand Slash, taking advantage of the sand while it's up. There we go. Frashner comes in. And uh, we're going to go straight for the EQ. I don't see any reason not to. We outspeed it. It's going to do some decent damage to anything this witch in, except for the Salamance, in which case we just Stone Edge. They are going to withdraw Clifford. What are they going to go into? Probably the Salamance, right? Clamps, the Scizor. Now, Scizor is definitely 2 it KO'd here by Earthquake, so let's just go ahead and do that. Nearly one shot, actually. Nearly one shot, which is crazy to me. Sand Slash is actually really good in the sand. So let's get the Earthquake off again. They go for a Bullet Punch just to get some last-ditch effort uh, damage off on us. Uh, we go for the EQ. That's going to take out the Scizor nice and easily. Down it goes. Down it goes. So with Clamps out of the way. Clampsy out of the way. Uh, the next time we get T-Tar in on a free switch against something like the Apom, Sandstorm subsided, which is really unfortunate. Really unfortunate, in fact. So unfortunate, in fact, that it's actually a bit depressing. They're going to go into Abu, the monkey. This thing is... Um, how do I say it? It's, it's uh, pretty defying. Let's go into our T-Tar again. Uh, this time, just to get the Sandstorm off, we're probably going to end up getting taken out here. So we're going to T-Tar real quick. There we go. Get the sand stream up, which is what we want. Bit of sand, bit of sand. They go for a fake out. That's going to do nothing. Uh, we might actually live a um, a U-turn now. Might. It's a big might. If we do live a U-turn, we go for a Stealth Rocks or we go for a Stone Edge. Stone Edge will hit the uh, Arcanine. It'll hit the Salamance. Stealth Rock will hurt in the long run. I think Stone Edge is the best player. I don't think we need Stealth Rock at this point. So they're going to go for a U-turn. Is it going to KO us? Probably. Yep, there we go. He's KO'd. See, it didn't really matter anyway because we were going to get KO'd by the U-turn. I kind of knew in the back of my head it was going to KO us, but I was just holding off hope that my physically defensive Tyranitar could potentially live a U-turn from an Amber Palm unstabbed. But, you know, it's too, too wishful of thinking, that is. There's Toothless, the Salamence. So Salamence, we know he's Choice Scarfed. Gonna get buffered by the sandstorm a little bit. Uh, we get to go into our nice and powerful Hippowdon now. The reason we're going to Hippowdon is because it's bulky enough to be able to take a hit from Salamance. Um, whereas Sandslash, on the other hand, I have a theory that it's going to get outsped. So we're going to go for a Stone Edge. Stone Edge is boosted by Sand Force. Um, so is Earthquake, but Stone Edge is obviously better in this situation. They're going to withdraw Toothless. What are they going to go into Arcanine to get the Intimidate off? Yeah, there's the Arcanine to get the Intimidate off, of course. Um, gets the Intimidate off as you'd expect. And uh, we go for a Stone Edge. We hit the Stone Edge, which is great. That's going to destroy Clifford the Big Red Dog. Even with the Intimidate, no chance. Absolutely zero chance in hell. None whatsoever. In comes Abu the Monkey. The Ambipom. Uh, we're going to go for another Stone Edge because I don't see any reason not to. They fake out to, to store the Sandstorm turns, which is fine. Does a lot of damage, actually, to be fair. Um, they now U-turn, I think. Uh, we just go for another Stone Edge. There's no reason not to go for another Stone Edge. I mean, we are locked in, so they, yeah, we kind of have to. Double hit's going to come through. We're going to miss the Stone Edge, aren't we? Watch. No, we don't! Stone Edge is going to come through. Doesn't quite get the KO, though, because of the Intimidate from the Arcanine earlier, which is a real shame. Um, double hit will probably KO from here, I would say. I think we lose to Salamance, though. I think we lose to Salamance now. There's the double hit that's going to take us out, unfortunately. Um, but it's fine. Sandstorm should last another couple of turns. I think. I'm pretty sure it does. Pretty sure Sandstorm lasts a couple of more turns. Um, we go Sand Slash here. Real quick. 
And we do outspeed the Ambipom Pump because of the Sandstorm. But how long will that last? We go for Poison Jab here to take it out because we don't want to miss the Stone Edge. And that will also hit the Salamence if they switched in. There's the Poison Jab coming through. Nice and easily does it. And now the Salamence is in a Catch-20 situation. Does it go for a Dragon Claw to take us out? Knowing full damn well that Dragon Claw won't take Empoleon out and we can just take it out with an Ice Beam. Or does it go for an Earthquake to take us out so we can take out the Empoleon but not be able to touch the Heatran? Uh, the Heatran? <laughs> the Rotom Heat. Um, we go for Stone Edge because I want to see if we outspeed. We don't outspeed. They go for an Outrage. That's going to take us out. No problems there. Um, now, they're going to get a Moxie Boost. So this is all going to come down to whether Empoleon can take a Moxie Boosted Outrage or not. Now, I'm not a betting man by any means. But I think we go Empoleon. I think I have every faith that Empoleon will live this outrage. It needs to. Ice Beam. Let's do this. Come on, Empoleon. Live for us. It lives by loads. Don't flinch us. Don't flinch us. It won't flinch us anyway, but obviously, but uh, Ice Beam comes through. That's going to take out the Salamence, and that is going to be the game. That was a really fun, close game. Wow, I really enjoyed that one. Really enjoyed that one. Thank you for the battle, Mike. That was a GG. That freeze on the Don fan was unfortunate, but yeah, whatever. Who cares? <laughs> right? Who cares? It is what it is. Anyway, thank you for watching today's video. If you did enjoy, of course, leave a like, subscribe, all that wonderful stuff. And with that being said, I'll see you all in a bit.